Hey everybody, my name is Ashley and I'm the social media manager for Extensis. And I am going to interview a very special individual um, in recognition of Hispanic Heritage Month. And I am here with I've seen, and we're gonna have a conversation um, and we're gonna focus on this community spe specifically because we wanna learn more about this community and more creatives that are involved and working hard in this community. So I'm gonna start by just asking you how your day has gone so far. Well, thank you very much for, for inviting me. Um, it's my pleasure Ooh. to be here talking to you guys today. And um, how my day has gone so far, um, I'm onboarding with um, with a new employment in graphic design as an editorial designer um, starting tomorrow. So nice. Been been preparing myself for that. So yeah. okay, go ahead and share a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background and just your creativity spark that you've been in, engaged in lately. Well, um, my parents actually um, were born in Mexico, um, but my heritage is a combination of Spanish and also um, uh, indigenous of Mexico, of Western Mexico. And so uh, my parents instilled a lot of traditional, you know, Mexican, uh, uh, you know, customs and a lot of the art. And uh, my dad was a tailor. Um, he was actually a professional tailor. So he did a lot of clothing. He actually um, sewed real clothes. And oh, so wow. he taught me how to do that. Um, I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer, um, but I didn't really know that I wanted to be a graphic designer. I kind of just said, oh, I want to do design. Um, I even said I wanted to do, uh, you know, clothing design, fashion design. And um, it wasn't until much later, I actually didn't get involved in graphic design. I went to sales in healthcare and did that for over 10 years. And um, because of all the layoffs, um, I worked as a pharmaceutical rep and um, lots of layoffs there. And I left that career and I decided that I would pursue, finally pursue after all this time, I would pursue an art degree. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had the choice between art and design. And when I really realized that what I loved to do was actually graphic design and how I could communicate with people that way, um, that's what I gravitated towards. And so that's how I, I went back to school and, and just started all the way, all over again. <laughs> you know, we, as creatives, we go through so many sometimes industries to figure out where we should actually land. And what advice would you give another creative that's kind of struggling to really know where they should go in their career? Like how to monetize that? What advice would you give them? Well, um, First of all, I'd say one of the important things, at least um, in some of my research in what I've done, is realize how important it is to talk to your children. Um, I have children of my own um, that are older, and but also as a teenager myself, I didn't know how to communicate to my parents that that's something that I really wanted to do. I said I wanted to go into art. Um, into the art field and I just didn't know how to communicate. This is what I want to do. Um, even though they said, you know, oh, th this is not going to make you a lot of money. You won't be successful. You're going to be a starving student. And mm -hmm. that was one of those things where if I would have known more about the opportunities in mm -hmm in graphic design um, to be able to share that with them and explain, you know, sometimes it's not about money. I have um, worked in sales and I had a lucrative career, but I was not happy. So um, that is one thing yeah. too, to look at um, happiness, um, what's going to make you happy, what's going to fulfill you at the end of the day. And then the other thing is, you know, learning more about the careers that are possible, because when we yeah. say graphic design, um, there are a lot of people that don't understand what graphic design is and That's how it's all around you it's it's everywhere it's everything that you touch it is um, <laughs> so that's something that you know i think is misunderstood with a lot of um a lot of families and so if they're if they're you know teenagers you know or you know college age students might come to them and approach them about that they might not understand that that is actually a lucrative career as well yeah well said i, I love that explanation and um the reason why you're here today, I was just kind of scrolling and I was looking at different stats related to this month. And I know there's a, a ton of supportive groups that are ha helping all types of creatives. And I ran across this project that you were doing, this research project. Will you tell us a little bit about that? And I love to dive into some of those numbers. Just, just make us aware. 
Yeah, um, definitely. Um, I'd say it's probably one of my passion projects. I did it my senior year. Um, it is called Donde Esta Mi Gente, and it really plays back in Spanish. Um, I speak fluent Spanish, and um, it plays back to where are my people. And um, how it came about was I actually... As a graphic design student, I didn't have a lot of people around me that were Hispanic um, and graphic designers or even art students. I, there was a few, but not very many. And, um, you know, when it came to professors and other people around me, I didn't have that type of like mentorship. And so um, one day, one of my um, colleagues at school sent me an article and it was about the um, 2016 design census that was done by AIGA, so the Association for, for Graphic Designers. And um, I am a member of the San Francisco chapter. And so I thought, you know, I'm just going to go look at everything that they have about it. And I just yeah. kind of dived into the information. And um, what's really interesting is I'm in California. Um, Hispanics are, you know, the largest population in the U.S. Um, their second largest population of um, demographics in the U.S. And here in California, um, you know, it's it's one of the largest. And I just was really surprised by the numbers. So in 2016, they revealed 73% um, um, that were surveyed, identified as white, and this is graphic designers. 9% um, were Hispanic. There was 9% um, Hispanic, 8% Asian, and then 3% were black. And um, I had already seen the movement uh, where all the black designers and I loved that because it really gave us a sense of, you know, this is what's going on and, you know, what can we do to kind of showcase some of these people and give them a little bit more spotlight. And so I thought, you know, we need something like this for Hispanics as well. And so that is something that I, I really wanted to be able to, to show those numbers. Um, I, yeah. The more I dived into that project, the more I found out that there were things that haven't really changed um, since 2016. In um, 2021, Zipia did another survey uh, based around the same demographics and statistics, and it was 75% white, so the number had gone up for, for the white demographics, um, taking up that big chunk of the, the pie chart, and then it was 10.3% Hispanic, 8.3% um, Asian, and then Black or African American was 3.3. So the numbers, they went up slightly, but not a lot, 0.3. In, in most of those, they went 0.3, and then, you know, from 73 to 75 for, for the white um, demographic. Um, the interesting thing is, it's actually, I checked it this month, and in September, as of September, uh, Zipia's numbers have gone up for um, the, the white uh, percentage, and um, that number, you know, again, has, has gone down for, for Hispanic uh, graphic designers and also for, for black and Asian designers. So um, the numbers are going, um, you know, they're, they're not changing, they're getting worse. <laughs> yeah. So that is something that, again, you know, I, I still think that we need a lot more um, coverage around it and, you know, people to be, a, be aware of it. Um, there are so many different reasons why it's, why it's happening. Um, one of them I know I, I feel is a big one is imposter syndrome. So that's something, you know, that, I feel that, you know, as a female Hispanic, um, that's something that we, we deal with. And a lot of other, you know, women and other people will also feel as well. But but I think that um, being able to communicate with um, parents at a young age about careers and, you know, developing those types of uh, those careers that might go into like an art or design field. Yeah, you're right. It, it starts at their youth stage. And I love that you're you're letting them know that they, representation matters at su such a, a young age, and I think that's very important. What other strategies or techniques or just things that you feel like we can do to encourage more representation of just all types of designers, specifically in this community? Well, for one, for sure, I think is um, that education of letting people know what it means um, that if you do study graphic design or even art, you know, where that can take you and mm -hmm. that there are serious employments. There's this type of, um, I guess, you know, thought, you know, with some parents that, you know, the starving student, you know, story of, you know, don't go into that. Um, you're not going to make money. And, you know, again, that's not the only thing that's 
that's something that we have to worry about. Um, the other thing is that a lot of these students, you know, especially I know for me, um, being a first generation here, um, my parents didn't know how to apply for a you know scholarship or apply for student federal aid or, you know, apply for college. <laughs> you yeah. know, those are things that that you need somebody to kind of help you with. And I think that um, having other people that are also um, Hispanic can help in those schools and kind of guide them um, yeah. through that, that have a little bit more of an understanding or that can even communicate to parents. I think um, advocates, you know, yeah. for, for students, um, you know, whether they're in high school or college or even beyond, um, having somebody that you have at work, even as a, you know, young professional can be really helpful to have um, somebody that you can that you can talk and trust and and having a safe space to go there and, and talk about that as well. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Let's chat out some Hispanic creatives or artists that that you look up to. I love to hear their names and what they do. Um, I know. Well, I have so many of them. <laughs> Okay. I have Great. I have so many of them, but I I would say um, for one of them I'd say Rebecca um, Mendez, who I know uh, she was one of the first uh, graphic designers, Mexican um, and American designer that you know has won so many different awards. And um, I don't hear too much about her. Mm -hmm. I actually um, I did include her in a designer spotlight on my on my project um, when I did the poster zine and on my Instagram account for it, um, just because it was something that I didn't, you know, I had never heard of her. And when going to school, you learn about all these different designers and uh, designers that I love. And I thought, you know, the majority of them weren't female. And then, you know, when I found one that was female, so um, um, I'll just read just a tiny, tiny part of this, but um, she's one of the first and only uh, Latinas to win one of these, a uh, Cooper Hewitt National Design Award in Communication Design in 2012, and then AIGA Medal in 2017, and then induction into the One Club um, Hall of Fame in 2017. And um, she's also the UCLA Design Media Arts um, professor. So, you know, just oh. these are, these are you know, big achievements. And so for me, I feel like that's, you know, a proud moment to say like, okay, yeah. there are people that, that can be successful that are out there and um, that are women and especially, you know, Hispanic um, female as well. So um, that's one of them. Um, Alex uh, Troshut, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly. He is a Spanish designer um, and, you know, that does go back to um, one of the other things, too, is that there's a, there's so much, um, you know, whether we're saying Latinx or, or Hispanic, um, mm -hmm. because I was including also the, you know, Spanish designer like Alex, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was using the term Hispanic. So, yeah, that's another thing as well. Got it. And I want to ask you one more thing. I know and I could just feel it through the through the screen. You're you're so passionate about students and education. If any students were to see this, what type of advice would you give them? I would say besides besides, you know, trying to to see uh how you can, you know, look for any of those job hunting sites, um, like, you know, LinkedIn, you know, that kind of stuff. Besides doing stuff like that, I think networking is really, really important. And that's something that I don't I don't feel that they teach enough of in, no. in school. I don't think that they, they like teach to enough of it. From behind a screen. It's like, no, you yeah. got people face to face. Yeah. And and because because of the fact that again, um, you have a lot of students that that might feel that imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. I think it's also really important to be able to to have that space where you can network with people and um, not just, you know, other Hispanic designers, but just everybody. And that's something that I think that that could be really helpful. Um, I did, like I said, I put um, together like resources and, and links um, to check out on my um, my poster zine, you know, to try to help people out. So, you know, understanding that there are, you know, free versions of things out there. There are types of um, open source, you know, software that um, students can you know, try to learn and lots of other just, you, you know, job hunting. Would you stuff. mind sharing a few of those resources? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I can. So, um, and some of them probably are things <laughs> that people, people are probably already, you know, using. Um, these yeah, are just like a few of them. 
but I know um, on my poster scene, I didn't have enough space on there to put too many things, but I know like um, using just, you know, free, you know, usable photo images like on unsplash.com, um, mm -hmm. blender.org, you know, for, you know, free open source uh, 3D computer graphics software, which is something that I was learning how to do. So a lot of those programs, um, you know, some of the Adobe stuff that you can get through through school, um, Figma now, you know, with the educational, um, you know, programs that they have. So that's available to, to them as well. So there's just a lot that you can do. There's, um, I learned how to use a dollar this um, summer, which is also another um, one that you can use for um, creating apps. Um, and, you know, wireframing, prototyping, everything. So, so those are just little things that, you know, yeah. if you don't have a subscription and you can't afford to, you know, check out, you know, some of the Adobe software, which, you know, can be expensive, um, even for, you know, students that get out of school like me, which I have to pay for my subscription now. And so, uh, you know, just having those tools at our, you know, fingertips can help us uh, not just learn how to use something, but we're also looking at like career growth. And, yeah. you know, so like it's even for, you know, people that I would say looking for a job afterwards or just trying to brush up on their, you know, skills. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's end. Tell us where we can find you and how we can support you. Well, um, you can find me at a couple different places. I'm all over the place on Instagram. <laughs> I have more than one account. Um, I do have um, edit scene underscore design account for, for my design work. And then um, I do have a personal account on there that's also linked in there. And then at uh, donde esta mi gente, but it's uh, at donde underscore esta underscore mi underscore gente. <laughs> okay. And that is another, another one for, um, I am, trying to highlight different uh, Hispanic graphic designers. So if people want to reach out to me um, on there as well. And then trying to get just the, the word out. Um, I know another big thing uh, for me, it's important for people to also realize because they're the, the term um, understanding the difference between Hispanic and, and Latinx. I know that there's a lot of confusion around there and I um, want to make sure, you know, people understand why I'm using the term Hispanic all the time. And, um, it is, you know, for at least for the purposes of my project and how I identify, um, you, I think you should always ask people how they want to be identified um, because they might have a different term that they want to use. But the way I distinguish it um, and it's Hispanic, you know, referring to, to the language and then Latino is going to refer to the location uh, mm. because I am a mix of both indigenous and Spanish, I use the term Hispanic because um, Hispanic does include uh, people that are also from Spain. So that that is one distinction. Um, so there's so many different countries and I won't be able to list them all, but you know, a lot of uh, Latin American countries. Um, so it, it's not all Spanish speaking people are Latino and not all Latinos are Hispanic. So that's why I just say, you know, one thing that I think people can, can learn is to just kind of ask people, you know, how they choose to identify. And if they want to use gender neutral terms as well, um, like Latinx, then, you know, just asking people what they want to use. Yeah. You're just, a, you're like a coach in this, I love this teacher vibe that you have. But oh, <laughs> thank you. Education is great. And it's, it's great to clear those things because you're right, a lot of people they don't know the difference and, and they, they guess and they say things and they, they just don't know. So thank you for clearing that up. Um, we're going to go ahead and end this interview and I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. I know you've got your new gig that you're starting and we're so excited for you. Yes. Um, and thank you guys for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.